Okay, YouTubers, back here in front of the camera again. Got a little project today we're going to be uh, working on. I I found myself in need of a an additional dust separator. Of course, if uh, you watch uh, watch the channel, you know I got dust collection in the shop, but I also got a little portable dust collector that I can roll around and clean up with and hook to various machines or whatever I need to do. But <clears throat> I kept another small shock back uh, over on the wall and what I do with it is I use it for chip extraction on my pocket hole jig and uh, when I set up the uh, SSRK and do the dados and the rabbits and stuff with that I, I connect that router to it for for the dust extraction and then if I've got a big piece and I bring it over here to uh, to the table to sand on or something, I'll hook the sanders to it to keep the dust down. But I just had it straight straight into a uh, small shop vac. And uh, of course, as everybody knows, you know, that, that don't work out really well. I mean, it works okay for a few minutes, but hit, uh, plug up your filter and this thing, this little small shop vac didn't have all that great a filter anyway. It just, uh, it just, a, just a very basic small shop back. But see, anyway, what I wanted was a separator where I could hook to it and just leave it sitting there as a dedicated unit. And I didn't want to have to buy a Cyclone. I know there's a lot of them out there. Uh, the smaller ones, you know, like Dust Deputy and uh, Clearview's got that really nice one out. Those, those are nice pieces. They really are. So, we didn't want to have to spend that kind of money for just a little dedicated thing that didn't really get used that often. So, I've been thinking about it and uh, the best, easiest way to come up with a little uh, dust extractor. And, I, and I've got something here. that I built one. It was just a prototype. I don't have anything in it. Uh, and uh, like I said, this, this was just the first one. It was more of an experiment to see if I could make it work than anything. Uh, but I'll show, uh, I'll spin the camera here and let you get a better look at it. It's made... Uh, it's a theme baffles what it is instead of actually a cyclone. Uh, I did this one because I number one I want to see if I could make it work and if it worked out okay uh, that I, I had in my mind. And number two, uh, it did work so it can be reproduced. In fact, I've got this one built and got it working. But what I'm going to do in this video series, it may be a couple of parts. I'm going to make I'm going to build another one. Uh, I don't need another one, but I want to build another one for this video so I can show how it's done. And uh, who knows, I may get an extra shop vac and leave a sander hook to it or something there so it can uh, can work there. Some of those dust extractions for those hand sanders is just crazy expensive. But anyway, let me let me spin this around here and show you what I'm talking about. I took this can, and uh, it's all it is, just a coffee can. It was just a, like I said, you probably use it about any, any kind of can, but this is just a coffee can, and I cut the bottom out of it to start with. I just, just took a can opener. Well, actually, in all reality, I took my Swiss Army knife with a can opener and just cut the bottom out of the thing. And I just took me a file and uh, a piece of sandpaper and, and filed it down smooth here where it, was, it didn't cut you. But. So this is how I started. And then I just uh, I cut me a couple of circles to fit this. I cut those out on a bandsaw. You could cut them out with a jigsaw, or because they don't, they don't, uh, they certainly don't have to be perfect. They need to fit fairly well, but it don't have to be. We're not making furniture here. Okay, <clears throat> we got some 16 squares cut out. Here's this: the top of the can, bottom of the can, the can itself. I need a 16 circle. And that'd be just right inside this flange. It'll work for down here also. So. Uh, well, we need some six inch pieces. Well, I, I just took some scrap plywood. Uh, this plywood would be fine on this on this project and cut me some six inch square. And then I'm gonna just take a center finder and mark these pieces with a center like this. We've got, got it marked out there in the center. Now we'll take it over here to the bandsaw. I've got a little circle cutting jig set up on my shopsmith, so I'm going to take this thing over here. I'm going to cut it out with it. I'll let you see how that works.
Okay, that's why that works if you got a you got a circle cutting jig. It works really well. It'll cut that thing out for you. But like I said, you can use a jigsaw, you can freehand it on the bandsaw, you can even cut it on a table saw if you make yourself a Okay, jig. now we're here we're gonna mark this thing to cut the uh, to cut the bottom insert. Uh, I just use a compass, you can mark it anyway. This keeps it uh, pretty much the same all the way around. So we just run this thing around here. And I, I just, uh, I didn't have any measurement in mind. Uh, I looked at some of the other, other ones that uh, people was making online. And I, and I just got a visual reference of what it what it kind of looked like uh, it didn't have any sizes and this thing is a is a strange size for this coffee can anyway so you couldn't I, I never did find anything that uh, let me calculate it so I took some of them that uh, <clears throat> that was made for the bigger ones to just look at the proportion of it and and see how much to cut off I, I'm not I'm not convinced that it that it's that it's extremely critical to be any perfect size. I'm I'm sure that it would work better or worse if it was bigger or smaller. I don't know, but uh, this was about the size that we run on the prototype when I built it, and it's about oh somewhere in the neighborhood of 11 sixteenths of an inch. I could be a little bigger. Uh, and I'm, I'm again using the center finder here to make my mark for my pieces where it'll be cut right here. So we'll take this to the bandsaw and we'll cut this out here. Cut it here. And this, this part here will be anchored to the can via some screws and what have you. And this, is, this will be the cut out here where the, uh, the chips and stuff drop down. So we'll take this thing to the bandsaw and cut it out. Okay, now here we are at the bandsaw. We'll, we'll cut this thing out and ready to put it in. Move back over here to the can. Let's see how this is going to work out for us here. So this will go in here just like this, and it'll get uh, it'll get screwed to the side of the can, and that'll put our that'll put our ring in here. Let our chips and dust drop down when it. Uh, spirals around the can here. Let me get this up here. So this is what it looked like. Like I said, I, I'm sure that it makes a difference on the efficiency of the separator. Uh, the size of this thing and how far it goes around, this is just a rough estimate, just a rough guess. Uh, like I said earlier, it, it anything is an improvement uh, when you hook it to that sh that little shop vac, uh, it's just a, a real a real cheap filtering system on it, and you put a lot of dust through it, and then it stops up really fast if you use it much. So this this is going to be a huge improvement for that. Uh, like I said, 
earlier in the video. I know that this is not going to be probably the optimal solution, but it doesn't cost anything. So, and on that particular application, we can get by just to, with a little bit less. Okay, I've got some places marked here on the can. A little permanent marker. I don't know if you can see them or not, but just places where I want to, I want to bore some holes through the can. Now to let us uh, attach our piece in here. I'll turn it up here and bore these holes. So now, there's how that looks. It's installed. The top piece will be in, put on here like this. And all this, this top piece will be silicone. Next we'll take that that piece that we cut on the bandsaw that goes on the side of the can, which will actually be the, the input, and uh, we'll position it up here and we'll get us a mark on this can and cut a hole for it. We'll caulk it and screw it on here, and uh, this thing will be finished. Okay, we got set up here and we're going to bore a hole in the can where we're marked with the input on it. And uh, I realize I've got kind of a unique setup right here with this cross slide vise on this drill press. And just going to use a, uh, a hole saw to cut the hole and we'll enlarge it, whatever. Maybe a file and some stuff. Okay, give us just a nice round hole right there. We may have to take, we may have to enlarge it a little bit on each side just to come out to the mark, but it's not going to be but a very small amount. Okay, back over here to the workbench. What I'm going to use now to enlarge this hole right to the marks where we made before we, we marked it with the permanent marker is. Uh, I have got a I have got a die grinder here with a carbide rasp in it. This this is used in <clears throat> several different applications, but you can find it some in the woodworking and automotive field and uh, that sort of thing. But what it is is solid carbide. It's teeth on it, and it'll work metal, wood, just about anything. And I'm going to take it and I'm just going to enlarge this hole right here. And I, if you don't have one of these, you can use a. Uh, a file or a round file or however you do and in a coffee can like this not gonna take a whole lot no how. And that's why we use the, uh, the carbide cutter on a die grinder for the, just the sheer speed of the thing. So that looks like that's going to play out really well. So we can go ahead and put that on there. So that's what we'll do here now. Uh, take the top back out of it. And I'll, uh, I'll position this thing. And let's see if I can get to, you can see. We got just about, yeah, okay. So now you can see what it's going to do. We're going to we'll take some caulking and put it around that thing. And then uh, I'm going to bore a couple of holes through the can. I'll pick out me a couple of locations. So after I, those holes bored in it and I caulk up around there to make sure that we have a really good seal on the can, 
then I'll put some screws in it and uh, and hold it up there. That'll hold it to the can. Silicone will dry up, I mean, and uh, you'll have a good tight seal around it there. Okay, now we got some just uh, it's got us bead of silicone around this thing, and we're gonna put it on the can here and get it in position and screw it to the can. This is the separator itself. I look down inside here. You can see in the camera, you can see some squeeze out there on that lip where the top sealed up good. Now I'll be able to take and cut a piece for the bottom. And that's how we'll attach it to the bucket. So we get one of those cut out and be ready to put it on a bucket. 